What's up guys, Axis here and I'm back with a new video, today I'm going to be showing you how to create these hazard lines inside of Arnold for Cinema 4D. Now a lot of people have been asking for Arnold tutorials, so I thought I'd actually do one. These hazard lines here are actually procedural, like the lines themselves. Apart from the, the overlays, those aren't procedural. And um, yeah, I'm going to plug something first. Landscape Essentials, 50 height maps, normal maps and texture maps. You can see some lovely images up on screen, Some some even some renders from customers now. So if you've got any stuff that you want to share, I'll, I'll just plug it at the start of the video. But you can check this out. I've got a bunch of tutorials on my channel. If you want to see what you can do with it, you can use these displacement maps or all 8K in any renderer uh, that has support for displacement maps, even normal Cinema 4D. I've actually got a tutorial on that. But you can use it in Arnold, Redshift, Octane, etc. Even game engines. Game engines actually utilize it very well. So anyway, Go check it out in the top right hand corner or the first link in the description. That would be greatly appreciated. Now let's get into this tutorial. Let's just create a new composition and I'm going to be bringing in a cube. As you can see the original one has got a bit uh, extruded on each side. But, you know, it's pretty self explanatory. Don't want to waste my time doing that. So, um, I'm going to do Alt W R to uh, start the render or you can just click play. But I'm a simple man. So then we're going to bring in an Arnold shader. So we're going to go to surface and standard surface. Or you can do Alt W and N. Another shortcut. And actually, before we start, I'm actually going to be showing you how to... Uh, or what shortcuts I'm going to be using. So if you see me doing something, you're like, how do, how do you do that? Just go back to this point in the video and you should be able to figure out what's going on. Also, you need to open the shader graph which you can do by middle clicking around here or clicking open network editor on the right. So let's start with the shortcut. So I'm going to bring in two ramps. This is a uh, demonstration. So we've got one in here and immediately it will connect to the Arnold Beauty shader. So if we disconnect this and do Alt W and 1, it will connect to the Arnold Beauty shader. I'm going to be using this one a lot. Second one is going to be dragging an a node onto this other node over here or whatever node it happens to be hold alt while you're dragging and then you get this dialog box where you can insert before or after put it wherever i'm putting it <laughs> and there we go oh and also i'm going to be using one where you hold shift and the first one in the hierarchy will actually drag everyone uh, lower in the hierarchy around so you don't have to select a bunch of different nodes uh, this won't be that useful because we we aren't using that many nodes in this tutorial. But you know when your when your nodes start to get hectic, then um, might want to use that. So let's bring in our float value or our ramp float, and just to make things a bit cleaner, we're going to go to spline presets and set this to linear. Drag this all the way to 0.5, and put this one to 0.501. I really like this this way of displaying ramps in cinema. Um, I wish Octane used it, but um, or had a different node for it or something. But essentially what this is doing, it's going to be black all the way along here and then up, and we're going white for the rest of it. So it's basically split halfway. So you'll see that as soon as I put this onto the U, Q, uh, U channel and drag the shader onto the cube. So now we've got this going vertically up and down, and it's using the standard UVW transform uh, that we've got on our cube at the moment, which you can't see, but you'll see when we make it editable, which we're not going to be. So there we go. Um, let's go and actually UV transform this. Now I've had a lot of headache with doing this. Uh, I was using a different UV tag before, and I was using cubic, but it would make the the UV, the, uh, the hazard lines flip on the other side. So the way that I'm going to fix that is by just doing it all through a UV transform node. Uh, so we can close frame because we're not going to be using this at all. I'm going to put these all on 8. Uh, if you want to have less re uh, repetitions or you want to actually change the angle, you're going to have to change the repeat because as soon as we start rotating this, you'll see that these are all split. And we're going to have to actually match this to one of these. So basically get it as close as you can. That's actually looking perfect, to be honest. Apart from, you can see a tiny bit, but basically the way you would fix this is you would just 
go to the lower value or the higher value, whatever whatever way it needs to go, and put this as an increment of like 0 0.01, and you should be able to get it. There we go. So you had to go to 0 0.01 uh, instead of 0 0.1 values, but um, yeah, we we got it fixed. So as you see, if I if I scroll around this, everything's fine. Looks absolutely great. So that's one way to do it. But I, and I'm only going to be showing you one way. So <laughs> sod it. <laughs> Never saying sod it again, right? Um. Anyway, now let's create our second ramp. Put this on V, which is going to be diagonal. And as you can see, we've got this nice gradient. Nice gradient going from 0 to 100. Real quick. Now go to Spline Presets and Linear. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this on point 0.3. Point 0.301. And we've got the bottom done. We, we want the middle to still be intact though, so we're going to bring one over here. And a nice way to do this if you are lazy is you can just copy the X value and since the maximum of this is 1, you just do 1 minus that value. And we've got 699, and then the next one will be 0.7 because it's 1 minus 0.3. So now we've got this cube in the middle, which is what we want. We can grab a layer color, and this is very useful. It's essentially like using a layer in standard cinema, but um, with Arnold. <laughs> That's the only difference. So put this into main, layer 1 and put this out and we don't see anything different and that's because we need to put this into the layer 1 alpha. There we have it. But if you saw my original one I actually had this fade out. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to drag this over here. We can just do 0.4 and obviously we just do our trick again so it's going to be 0.6 if math hasn't failed me. Yep. Um, so that's what we're looking at now and also you might be able to see this is still linear uh, you can make this soft if you want by doing alt e or right clicking and doing it uh, but as you can see it makes no difference and i don't know if it's just a scenario or if there is like a slight difference but i'll just leave it like that for for vis visualization sake but it doesn't it doesn't make that much of a difference to be honest so you're probably best just sticking with linear Let's just go and grab a bitmap now because we're going to want to kind of split this up. Obviously in my original one I had tons and tons of layers. I had about like four or five layers of uh, of overlays onto this stripe here. I'm just going to be using one just to simplify it and you should know after I use this what we're doing. So I'm going to be dragging in a file. I grabbed a bitmap and basically opens up a dialog box. If you don't want to bring up the dialogue, I think you can do it here. Oh, I'm thinking about Redshift. There might be a way to do it, might not. Um, anyway, now we've brought my sh uh, shader in. I'm going to put this into our Arnold Beauty and let's see what's going to happen. Is it going to generate or is it going to crash? When you bring in a bitmap, what will happen is it will generate a, a TX file and it should appear up here. Alright, so that's the TX file generated. So, as you can see, we're using the standard UVs on this cube and it's looking it's looking not great. It's not looking like what we want it to look like. And the way we could do this is we could actually go and make a new UV, put that onto, or drag the UV into, where is it? Can you do it on this or is that to be on texture? Anyway, it's either on bitmap or texture, but you can add a UV or you can go through and actually add UV sets to each uh, ramp. But I'm not going to bother doing that. I'm actually going to use a triplanar because it essentially is cubic mapping. But it's got a bit more features. So as you can see now, it's at the right aspect ratio. There's no stretching, but it's very small, very tiled. So if we just put this down to 0.1. Funny quirk about Arnold is that if you actually put the scale down, it scales up. Who knows why? Redshift does the same. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm not going to question it. Um, so, as you can see, these are both the same on each side, and I want to have a bit more variation here. And the way I'd normally do this is actually by going to World, but for some reason uh, it doesn't work. It normally just works with cloners and stuff like that. 
if you want each clone to have a different have a different pattern on it, you can use world and it will it will use the world's reference instead of the the coordinates of the object. So that didn't do anything, but a way we can do this is by offsetting each axis. And it should work. So I'm going to do like 4 and 2. Doesn't really matter. Uh, and you can also mess around with Z, but I'm not going to bother. Okay. Right. So now we've got that. I'm going to go and put this into a ramp. So put this after input. And then I'm going to flip around these nodes like so. And what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be subtracting this material from our ramps. And if you've ever used that on a render engine, you'll know that white is 100% and black is 0. So essentially where it's white, there'll be no gradient. And where there's black, there will be. So if we drag this into our layer 2, put this into the output, see nothing. Note. Drag the layer to alpha up, and uh, there we go. That's that's it, guys. Basically, this is just a blending mode, so the opacity is the alpha, and it's on normal blending mode. So if we change this to anything other, you know, like subtract, it will start subtracting from the original. I want to get a bit more in here because I I really like when it starts to kind of eat away at the top and bottom. I think it looks cool. Okay, looks like it's damaged. Obviously you wouldn't have fingerprints on a... Well, you might actually. I don't think you'd have fingerprints this big though. But I just think it looks cool. You might have scratches. You might have... You know, like... Uh, streaks. Like a, like a leaky texture. Something like that. If it's on a pillar. But you probably wouldn't have fingerprints unless you had like the BFG paint in your stripes. But anyway... Now we've done that, we can actually start putting this into a standard surface. So I'm going to drag one in, and I'm going to drag in a Arnold Sky, which you can find in plugins, Cinema 4D to Arnold and Sky. Now, just for convenience sake, I'm going to be changing this to physical underscore sky, which is a decent a decent lighting scenario, which you can just do for you know setting up some textures out of scene. And then I'm going to drag this into our base color, Turn the weight up to 1, because by default it's on 0.8. And export this to the Arnold Beauty Pass. Also, I don't want any specular at all. You can add a bit of reflection, but I, I don't want any. And probably should have done this first, but we're actually going to be mixing these two together. You can mix a texture with this, so if you, if you want a, a concrete... Oops. If you want a concrete to be one of your shaders, then you just put that in to shader 1. Oh, I'm, put, I'm doing mix shader, I'm doing, I mean mix RGB, sorry. You drag this over and put this into your mix. And then for a second colour, I'm going to be making this yellow, but obviously you can get like a painted, painted texture or whatever you want for this section. And now I drag this into a colour. And there we have it, we have yellow. Which is pretty much what we're looking for. Uh, I'm going to make this a bit more visible by putting the black to a grey. Like so, and then I'm also going to be dragging a bump in here, just so it's it looks like it's been painted on. So there's a bit of a uh, difference between the, the base and the, the paint. So drag a bump 2D in here, and drag this into our geometry normal. And you can't really see it, but if I bump up, you'll be able to see it. There we go, a bit too high, but maybe 2 or 3 will do fine. Alright, so that's pretty much the tutorial. Um, you can utilize this and pretty much, I use I uh, uh, utilize this pretty much every day uh, using Arnold. So it's really a great technique and pretty transferable into other render engines. So if you guys enjoyed, remember to leave a like and if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to put some in the comments below. Hopefully me or someone else will be able to help you out. And don't forget to check out Landscape Essentials. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good day.